Hello everybody and welcome to my, well, not so latest venture. In a departure from my normally Arduino field experimentation, I've got this, which is a Nexus 2 board. It's a digital Nexus 2 uh, FPGA development board. It contains a Exilinx Spartan 3E 1200K chip. So this chip has 1.2 million equivalent gates and as you can see this development board has a few I.O. ports on the side and today this video will be exploring the VGA port. So the VGA port on this particular board is quite a simple design. It is just merely the FPGA having some pins connected to this port via a few resistors so the video graphic has to be generated um, from your design, so everything from the vertical to the horizontal sync pulses to the actual pixels themselves. So this is a good old analog display port and uh, I endeavoured to write my own drivers for it because the Digilent supplied drivers only supported 640x480 and 800x600 which are not very good resolutions for the present day displays. So I've generated a particular uh, video generator um, module which generates 1366 by 768 which is a 16 to 9 resolution as well as a 1280 by 1024 which is a 4 to 3 resolution format for uh, modern LCD panels. So one of the things you can do is head to the Visa website and download their working uh, sheets which allow you to work out what the pixel clock rate and what the front porch, rear porch and sync pulse width should be and then you can uh, embark on your project to create your own video generator that generates your particular resolution slash refresh rate needs. So first of all uh, let me just load up my project. So I've decided to go a little bit fancy today and uh, bring out some uh, desktop of mine. So this is not my normal desktop, this is just a secondary desktop which I've got which I use uh, when my primary desktop is tied up with something else, which it is. So, as you can see, um, I've just loaded up my project in Exilinx. There's a lot of files on the side. As you can see, this is hierarchical design at its best. So, this is a top level schematic. It's not very nice. Um, there's the Pixel DCM generator. So, this generates a pixel clock using a digital clock um, digital clock management unit on the actual FPGA. So that allows you to uh, synthesize your own clock as required. So I've required 110 megahertz for the mode 1280 and 85 megahertz for mode 1366. So the blocks mode 1366 and mode 1280 are just the display drivers. They generate the horizontal and vertical sync pulses and keep a track of the current pixel number. So they have uh, outputs for horizontal and vertical pixel number as well as the pixels themselves and the horizontal and vertical sync. Um, out mode select is just a multiplexer that chooses between these two modes and allows us to swap between the modes by flipping a switch. Uh, TP select is another really really large multiplexer, there's two of them. Each of these multiplexers allows us to select a particular um, input so I've just got uh, certain input blocks which show certain effects on the screen and those input bo blocks are connected to the display drivers depending on the position of switches. Um, this project had already been compiled into a bit file earlier and using Excelling Impact it had been compiled to an MCS file which has been loaded onto the ROM of the board. Okay, so why do we need an MCS file? Well, uh, BitFile is normally used as a bit stream that is loaded via JTAG to configure the FPGA itself. An MCS file is a specially formatted file which allows you to flash it to the platform flash which is on the board. Since FPGAs normally forget their configuration once powered off, if you load it into the platform flash you can flip a jumper and make the FPGA boot from the platform flash. That way, as soon as it is powered up, it configures itself based on the uh, bitstream inside the platform flash, and lo and behold, your design is automatically loaded without the need of a computer. Um, in this case, I've loaded it already onto the platform flash using Digital Interdept, and now it's time to see what the board can do. So here's my board, happily connected to USB power and booting off the platform flash. And here is my monitor. So as you can see right now, it's got a very, very fine pattern um, of 
black and white you probably can't see it but you can see the uh, Moya patterns that develop um, once I move the camera forward and backwards. Now we can switch display modes so the monitor takes a little while to resync to the new mode and it looks a little bit different because it has to be rescaled so let's flip back to the widescreen mode so we can generate a black screen white red green blue and a crosshatch so this could be quite useful if you wanted to say maybe do some dead pixel testing in the field for LCD monitors you just hook one of these up and it generates you an analog video signal which you can use to test uh, your display the crosshatch conversely is quite useful if you want to check the distortion of an old CRT monitor and make sure it's as uh, as low as possible so there we go a um, a video generator that I wrote myself.